G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is foul play here, back the fifth and final match of this Pioneer League. Not going so crash hot currently with the one and three. No lander there, so that is an obvious mull. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep this one, however. And I'm not entirely sure which one is correct to keep here. If we're versing a Yurian deck, the protection might be more important than the indestructible. So that might be a bit awkward with our mana. So we'll see what happens. Uh, either land's going to give away equally what we're playing. So courtyard pass. And a Jeska Trium from the opponent. I uh, think we've just got to run out SRAM and like hope and pray that it doesn't get removed. Maybe they're just a turn too late on their removal. Guess we'll see shortly. Never mind, it's another chain to the rocks money pile deck. I mean, that card's pretty cheap, but um, the land base and some of the other cards in this are pretty expensive. It's like a $500 deck or something, I'm pretty sure. All right, well, uh, let's just go ahead and go a bit harder now because our plan number one has gone down the drain, but we've got a fistful of enchantments after missing our land drops. It's possible as well. I wasn't supposed to turn to SRAM, but I was supposed to, like, double or here attack. That's a bit awkward, like, giving away both Griff Spoons, potentially. Our opponent might just be putting down, yeah... It's a setup turn, so if we hit land here, we can get the victory, I'm pretty sure, on damage. That one enters tapped, okay. Not a mana source, so if we hit Sentinel's Eyes Grispoon on our creature, that's going to be an attack for an extra four damage. We go Sentinel's Eyes, that's also, oh, sorry, all the glitters, that's also um, an extra four damage. Grispoon Sentinels works well with escape. These one mana spells work well with drawing land plus two mana creature. Um, I guess we just keep the two effects in hand. Attack for a decent chunk and again force our opponent to answer this. All right, enters the battlefield. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. <laughs> That's total, totally like a reasonable card for someone to be playing in the main deck, right? Uh, that does not seem right to me. Alright, well, uh, we've drawn pretty poorly so far. I guess we can get a look at what our opponent's doing before we concede. Omen of the Sea, Fires of Invention. So, just take an Omen. Um, the Fires are basically duplicates of each other, so there's no point in taking either of them. Alright, opponent play, uh, drew Temple Garden for turn, played that one out, playing out Omen of the Sea, getting a Scry and Draw. That's horrible news. Two of those cards to the top, and then they've drawn one of them. All right, land right on time, and uh, no creature in sight currently, so I think our deck's almost beat itself here. Like, one piece of interaction from the opponent. If we had that guaranteed third land drop, holding off on the uh, SRAM would have been correct, but that's a bit harder. Uh, a bit of reunion from the opponent. Draw a card. You may discard a card if you do draw two cards. All right, Fabled Mirror Breaker, everyone's favorite card in all formats. Breeding Pool as well. All right, so opponent's got two unknown cards in hand. Uh, you're in the hand. All right, so still two unknown cards in hand, but uh, we know about the Urian now. Selfless Savior. Got like uh, about one chance of winning this game and that's our opponent not having interaction for this little puppy. So see what happens. Uh, I mean, he still has a, like a flying creature as well. So it's not looking great for us. And opponent loots, fires and forests the graveyard there. Oh God. Death touch, whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. All right. <laughs> Uh, we're thoroughly spanked here. Alright, so another Fabled Mirror Breaker from hand for our opponent. This board state's getting pretty darn out of hand. We're going to need at least like a first strike effect here to get rid of the Urian. We've got a whole bunch of permanents coming back in on the end step here. Nothing to gain life. Oh wait, no, they get card draw triggers here. We sack a creature here. Okay, we're just bound. 
Okay, so this is what we're versing. Uh, it's another five color in Fires of Invention deck, uh, obviously with the Yuri in there. Fistful of different creature effects. Um, removal of Leyline Binding, Chain to Rocks. I think that's like the worst of the removal there. I think I saw a Vanishing Verse from an opponent in a previous lead. There's also Besage You. They'll be bringing in Rendering Volleys post board, so that's pretty horrible for us. Reminder as well guys, if you do enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. So um, Guild's Corn Ward should be pretty reasonable here. I think Trailblazer is fine as well, particularly if they're bringing in Rendering Volley. Um, Trailblazer is, you know, quite aggressive and all of that. Okay, Paul Eidolon probably out. Uh, we'll take out our life gain. We could bring in Leyline of Sanctity to stop like us sacking a creature, but mostly I think we're probably in a losing position there anyway. Um, I'd prefer not to overboard really. Uh, this hand seems pretty good, we'll keep. Uh, we basically want to see only auras <laughs> for the foreseeable future. Probably would have been like a touch better if one of these lands was Thoughtseize. Um, then we can work with a bit better information. Okay, well, step number one, we see another aura effect, so that's pretty damn fantastic. Uh, opponent wastes no time with Chain to the Rocks. Seems like uh, their 80 card deck stacked with these Chain to the Rocks. Very, very easy for them to get to from what I've seen so far. All right, so we'll go ahead and play our little SRAM, our Griff Spoon. We'll get our draw effect. All right, another creature, so again, <laughs> let's just see more auras from this point forward. All right, Trail of Ambition, and there's that wonderful main deck effect there coming to ruin our day. Five cards in our opponent's hand. Uh, another creature, all right, well, uh, <laughs> let's hope they don't have like a three mana sweeper effect here because that's gonna freaking suck. I guess we can give like, indestructible to one of them and uh then the other one can like yeah one selfless save you can save the other one and this guy's got enough power and toughness to live on his own uh, and is presence from our opponent so there's a draw effect off that one all right and uh i guess we can go ahead and do one of these bad boys does that that has to be a cast effect to Get the heroic, that's a bit unfortunate. Still, nice attack for six. See if we can take this to a game three. Leyline Binding, god, opponent, like, just mono removal. I, I wonder how this deck actually goes into a dedicated control deck like the Azura's control deck. Um, of course, our sideboard, we don't have any enchantment hate, so we can't next level this Chain to the Rocks, Leyline Binding. Um, it seems like a very, very rough matchup for us here. I actually have a sneaking suspicion that a uh, Glade Cover Scout variant of the deck might have a better time. All right, some ridiculous Planeswalker from our opponent. Calyx, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them. Enchain to the Rocks. Yeah, cool. Uh, good on you, opponent. <laughs> Put that into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom in a random order. Exile a creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. All right, well, that's going to be it for this league, guys. Um, we lost this deck twice and got thoroughly spanked both times. So I'm not sure if it was like a metagame shift or what went on there. Um, <laughs> either way, not not very good stuff for us. We th this Orzov deck has serious serious issues with with that deck. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. Maybe we need more discard effects. I don't even know if Inquisition is legal in the format. All right, so it says legality here. Modern Legacy Vintage. I guess it's not even legal in the format. Uh, it's not an issue, uh, not an, a, uh, an option. So I said before uh, at the beginning of the league that we probably should have been running Hammerhand. Um, because we're doing this, these Cave of Coloses, uh, we've got three copies of them in the deck. No, four copies. They can probably be Mana Confluence. Um, this deck has like, I think, 13 effects currently, which tap for colorless, mostly like, you know, two mana spells there. Um, 
so we might take a few more points of damage, but the upside of being able to cast Hammer Hand seems pretty reasonable to me. All right, a real quick look online as well. It looks like Duress is actually Pioneer Legal. Um, so that's probably a pretty reasonable option to board in into these matchups. And you probably want to be looking at possibly even the full four copies in the sideboard. So probably one of the main strengths originally in the format seems like a pretty big weakness to me currently. Uh, both Fatal Push and Dead Weight seem pretty poor choices of removal to me currently from what I have seen. Um, maybe like they're okay against like a humans matchup or something like that but it seems like a lot of the creatures are either big than, bigger than four power and toughness um we don't really have a good way to trigger our own revolt anyway it's pretty much just a sade and selfless savior uh that's pretty bad if you ask me so an effect like vanishing verse speaks like volume stronger to me um it's like a manner more expensive. It only hits monocolored stuff. I I think it's just a stronger effect. Um, we can bring in against these uh, five color bloody rubbish decks um, <laughs> with their chain to the rocks and their uh, leyline binding. Doesn't really help us get our auras back from the graveyard though. So that's not amazing. I think probably the weakest card in the sideboard currently now is Rest in Peace. Uh, I'm unsure if like removing it is correct or not, but I think that's probably a better place to be realistically uh, with the sideboard currently. With the main deck to make room for Hammer Hand, it's probably just one All That Glitters that gets minused. I know it gets buffed from our enchantment creatures. Um, we don't really have any artifacts in this particular build of the deck, but um, I think this is pretty reasonable place to be. The mana confluence could be a little bit greedy, honestly, um, only for hammer hand, but realistically it doesn't cost us much to try it and then uh, see if it works or not. Um, I think I'm gonna give this black white version of the deck one more shot because I'm like a sucker for punishment or something. Um, if this doesn't work, I might be going back to green white because th this chain to the rocks nonsense. If, actually, I might just go back to cha uh, green white anyway because chain to the rocks seems absolutely awful. But I think this is a reasonable uh, list to sort of consider at this point. I kind of like the sideboard a little bit more than what I did before. I have, have felt like there have been matchups where I've wanted more discard effects. So Duress plays that role pretty nicely. Um, as for Trailblazer, I mean. I think it's good where it's good and it's not where it's not. Uh, pretty good into burn. I guess if our opponent's boarding in rendering volley, it's reasonable, but um, that could that's probably the weakest card in my sideboard at the moment, I would say. I, I'm not leaving home without ley lines. I don't see the point, but... All right, so that's it for the video and the league hit uh, today, guys. It was a pretty savage one. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, is this five color fires of invention deck that much of an issue that we need to be uh, just running green for a hexproof creature or two? Uh, let me know. Till next time, guys. Have a wonderful day. I will see you then.